Hello everyone, welcome to tech2.com. In this chapter, we will learn how to manage transaction so that we can ensure concurrent execution without any problem, without any inconsistent database state. Okay, so, so far we have learned that in a multi-user system, we have multiple transactions are going on parallelly, right? And when multiple transactions are going on parallelly, they will try to access same data item, right? And in case, if one transaction is accessing a data item and another transaction tries to modify that data item, of course, it can lead to a problem, right? So we have to, to ensure that these problems should not occur while execution of the transaction, okay, while execution of the schedule. So we have already studied how we ensure serializability, okay? So to ensure the correctness, the schedule which we will form using the transactions that should be serializable, right? So let's say if I have transaction T1 and if I have another transaction T2, now they will have some operation, let's see, read, okay? And now these operations will be executing in interleaved manner, right? So we will create a schedule and we will execute it. And while creating schedule, Okay, we will ensure that schedule is serializable. Okay, because scheduler will only allow serializable schedules on CPU to execute, right? Now imagine a situation or let's understand this with an example. So let's say you have to book a ticket in the train. Okay, and in the train, only this seat is vacant, okay? Only one seat is vacant, otherwise all seats are full. Now, you approach to the counter, you and your friend both together, right? Or let's say, assume you have different counters. Now, you and another person approach to the counter at the same time, right? And this seat is, let's say, I'm denoting seat. Or let's say, seat, a, seat is represented using array so only this position is empty right now if i don't ensure that when this person or this counter person is accessing this seat okay then other should not be allowed if this tries to access at the same time it should not be allowed right otherwise if we don't restrict the access what will happen at the same time Okay, once this is booked by this person A, this will also book the same seat, right? B. So both will have, I mean, both will end up with booking the same seat and conflict will arise, right? Similarly, in the database, let's say we have a, in some table, we have some database item A, right? Now a transaction T1 is accessing this database item, okay? And similarly, another transaction T2 accessing this database item okay and now if this t2 writes this database item okay then whatever this has read will become dirty right or become useless so we have to, to ensure that when this transaction t1 is accessing this database item t2 is not allowed to access and when i'm saying access specially not allowed to right okay and if this is performing a right operation right operation then this is not allowed to write okay we may have a situation where let's say this b database item is being accessed by t1 and it's just reading the item then we can allow other transaction multiple transactions to read a da database item parallelly okay so multiple database database transactions perform read operation parallelly but write should be restricted because all the problems will be created by write only right okay so this is the whole story we need to control the excess of data or we need to control the execution of transactions okay and especially if i mention we need to control the concurrent execution of transaction so this is how we will proceed in this chapter now the question is how do we control? So as I, I said, when 
some transaction T1 is accessing this data item, another transaction T2 should not be allowed, okay? Or should be allowed based on what kind of access it wants, okay? So basically we have to restrict or we have to lock the access. What I'm saying is lock the access of this database item, okay? So that's why we call it locking, fine? And locking ensures locking ensures serializability and basically concurrency and hence serializability. Well, we also have another way of saying or another way of looking it on the situation that let's say a transaction T1, I'll, I'll draw separately. So let's say this Y. Now let's transaction T1 starts accessing the data. Now we can also do something like we note down when this transaction T1 started accessing the data. Okay, when this transaction T1 basically started. Okay, so start time of this transaction and then another transaction T2. Okay, then we note down what is the start time of T2. Okay, and depending upon this time when the transaction started, we can control whether it has access to some variable or not. Okay, or whether I have to allow access to that particular variable or not. So let's say what I do is I'm just giving you a random protocol. It's not one which is there in the syllabus or we have to read. It's just a simple assumption that let's say it, it started at some time t and it started at some time t dashed. Now what we do is we also keep a timestamp for this. Okay. So it's let's say t equal to 0 initially okay so if variable is not yet accessed or no one is trying to access we keep it 0 okay and now when some transaction access it we put change the access or timestamp as t right so we change the timestamp from the timestamp of the transaction itself okay and similarly when this transaction tries to modify or access the value First, it sees what is the uh, timestamp and compares. Okay, so this is all right now appearing vague. We will, uh, of course, learn all the types of concurrency control protocol in detail. So basically, we have two kind of concurrency control protocol. Okay, so what are the protocols we have to learn? So basically, we have two kind, and the first one is lock based protocol, and another one is time timestamp based okay so here what we do we simply apply lock on a particular particular data when some transaction access it and later on when transaction finished when transaction is finished then we unlock the data okay so that another transaction can access and we do some time timestamp or time comparison in time timestamp based protocol okay so before we go further and start studying log based protocol let's first understand what kind of locks do we have so basically we have two types of lock one is binary lock okay and another one is shared or exclusive lock shared and or whatever you say or exclusive lock so this binary lock is different from shared or exclusive lock it's simply zero one lock okay zero one as name suggests binary okay so it is like it is like when some data item x is there it can be in only two state either locked or unlocked okay so either you can access is access it or you cannot access it okay so that is only two types of lock. I mean, only two types of state this database item can be in and it is locked or unlocked. Now, you also have exclusive or shared lock where you have different states. So shared lock, we also call it read lock and exclusive lock are also called write lock. Okay, so this is read lock. And this is write lock, but we will call it shared and exclusive lock. Okay, 
so what happens is when some data item let's say this data item x is there and now multiple transactions let's say t1 t2 t3 all tries to read okay everyone wants to read the database item now there is no point of locking this data item okay for other trans other transactions to read because they are not anyway modifying so shared lock is that when read is performed by some transaction shared lock is applied it says any transaction can any transaction can perform read operation okay exclusive lock is different in such a manner that let's say now some transaction t4 is trying to perform a write operation over this transact this variable okay now to perform write it has to apply exclusive lock okay this exclusive lock exclusive lock okay so this is the main difference okay so you have two type of lock one is binary another one is shared and exclusive okay so in binary you have only two state zero or one either locked either unlocked here you have multiple states okay depending upon whether it is shared lock or exclusive lock if you have applied shared lock on a variable other transactions can read the data item okay but if if you have applied exclusive lock then no transaction can perform anything either read or write okay so if you write this thing in tabular manner what you will write is something like this so if read and read has to be done done then we can apply shared lock okay but read and write are not compatible we have to have exclusive lock okay write and read again exclusive and write and write exclusive okay so if two transaction are performing read read then we can have shared lock if at least one becomes write then we must have to apply exclusive lock okay so this is all about the introduction and the types of lock now in next lecture what we will do is we will start studying what kinds of locking protocol do we have okay so we will start one by one and we will learn locking protocols and then we will learn timestamp based protocol okay so see you in the next lecture thanks for watching